Hello, so today we'll talk about extending letrozole treatment and the duration and making whether it's effective in inducing ovulation induction with those women who have polycystic ovaries and have letrozole resistance. And so this was published in January 2023 in Fertility and Sterility. So what we do know is letrozole is the first line of therapy for ovulation induction, mainly with polycystic ovaries. What is the dose? The dose varies from 2.5 milligram from day two to day six, or five milligram from day two to day six. It seems that five milligram seems to have a better ovulation than day, uh, uh, than 2.5 milligram to be taken daily. So what is the basis of making this work? Now, as we discussed earlier, there is something known as the FSH window, the, the small period of time where you can start recruiting, and the FSH threshold. That's the minimum amount of FSH needed to break the threshold of one follicle. That is ovulation induction. So if you have a look at this, and this was a study which looked at cases in which letrozole had failed in polycystic ovaries, women with irregular cycles, women with PCOS ovaries, and who had biochemical evidence. Now, if you have a look at the study, they decided to give five milligram letrozole and they gave it from, for seven days and another group they gave it for 10 days continuously. And when you have a look at the uh, treatment, what they found that all women ovulated spontaneously. So there wasn't a need to give HCG as trigger. That's again, a, a very positive view. So if you look at one of Richard Legger's old papers where they looked at what gives most spontaneous ovulation, it seems that letrozole gave more spontaneous ovulation than clomiphene. So if you go back and now look at what was the chance of pregnancy, the chance of pregnancy with a seven day regime was live birth rate of 29% and with a 10 day regime was 18.75%. Now, it seemed that while that seems one parameter, Let's look at the multiple pregnancy rate. The multiple pregnancy rate with a seven day regime was 5.88, but with a 10 day regime was 20%. So there's a significant rise as soon as you increase the duration of letrozole. Why does that happen? What does letrozole do? If you look at the letrozole, the rise of FSH is much higher than clomiphene. So if you're going to give a longer duration, you're going to give a longer duration of the rise of FSH. And that leads to more follicles which are formed. Now, the other aspect is, does letrozole thin an endometrial lining? And it seemed that the endometrial lining, while you were on letrozole, did thin. But as soon as letrozole was stopped, the endometrial thickness was very much the same as those were the seven day or with controls. So it clearly indicates that while the, the estrogen sometimes gets suppressed and it gets suppressed by almost 90% at times if you give prolonged letrozole therapy. And that may end up giving you a thin line, uh, endometrial lining, but again, stopping letrozole allows the endometrial lining to recover. So if you have a look at the logic we say yes, before moving to gonadotrophins, it makes sense to give an extended course. I would move towards giving a seven day course before going for a 10 day course. The reasoning is you can just see the multiple follicle growth and a multiple pregnancy that occurs with a 10 day. But also it gives us a much clearer understanding that while we have traditionally used letrozole for five days, in cases of significant PCOS with letrozole resistance rather than waiting for the next cycle and in the next cycle using the same thing, it may make more sense in extending the course of letrozole for between seven or in other cases to 10 days. And that was quite a good review of the paper.